Good evening and welcome to Solano College for tonight's men's basketball matchup between the Napa Valley Storm and your Solano Falcons here on the Solano College Sports Network. Thanks for tuning in to tonight's broadcast. I am Nate McKay. Joining me on the call for tonight's game are my broadcast partners Zion Trammell and Trey Hunt. So Zion, let's start with you. What should we expect to see from the Napa Valley Storm coming into tonight's game? Yeah, Nate, Napa Valley, they're looking for their first win in 2020, but in order for them to have success tonight, they'll have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Solano's three-point shooting, and I expect freshman Shakir Howard to provide some of that three-point shooting, and if he can catch fire early tonight, I think he'll have a good game. And now, Trey, moving over to you, what should we expect to see from Solano trying to win their fourth consecutive game on the year? Well, Nate, I expect Solano to let their offense run through Danelle Stafford, who's coming off a career-high 36 points with an efficient 15 for 23 from the field, which moved him to 22 points per game this season. And he also went 100% from the free throw line, which lets the rest of his teammates know that they could trust him with the ball in his hands. Yeah, one of the players to watch out for tonight for Solano. And now let's meet the starting five for your Solano Falcons. Jordan Adams, sophomore, back at High School. Barry Roseboro. Sophomore, Monterey Trail High School. Daniel Stafford, sophomore, Stonemont High School. Uriah Bain, sophomore, Fairfield High School. Armani Kanemo, sophomore, Grant High School. And welcome back to Solano College as we are getting ready to get things underway with a pre-game introduction. Right now you're seeing Napa Valley currently. And a reminder, today's game is being presented by James Thomas Media, your one stop for all your media needs. So we previewed both teams in our intro today. Napa Valley looking for their first win of 2020, like Zion mentioned. And Solano trying to earn their fourth straight win of the year. And with the win tonight, they will be back at 500 overall and be two games above 500 in the Bay Valley Conference. Yeah, if they can pick up a win tonight, that definitely can would help them in their conference in the conference standings as they look to continue to move up. Especially with a hot Yuba team currently leading that Bay Valley Conference. Yeah. Solano plays them as their next home game, and that will be broadcasted as they lost to them on December 20th, 105 to 64. And they are a really good team this year and definitely easy to see why they are atop the Bay Valley Conference. Yeah, Nate, and Solano needs to not play down to the competition because, like you said, Nate, um, it'd be in the beginning that Napa has not even won this year yet, so they're hungry. They want to win. As we're getting ready for tip-off, and we are underway here from Solano College. Napa Valley will have the first possession. Solano will have the ball to start off the second half. Right away is met by good defense. Danelle Stafford down low in the paint. And a rebound taken by Solano. So the starters for Napa Valley, Braxton Adderley, Javon Williams, Brandon Radu, Amir, excuse me, sorry, Zach Swim and Salim Ali Musa round out the five for Napa Valley. As we're seeing some good ball movement here from Solano. And an Aaron pass that time. First turnover of the night for the Falcons. Yeah, both good defensive possessions from both teams to start. Yeah, we're seeing them both come out in man-to-man -man defense. It's working out for both of them so far. Yeah, that was a good takeaway there from Solano's end as we'll try to get on the board first. Here's Jordan Adams, free throw line jumper. No good. And now Napa will look to strike first again, and that is tipped, deflected. Napa gets it back, though. Pump fake. And nice layup taken inside that time by Brandon Radu. That was a good move down low by Radu, and we got our first points of the ball game. Here's a three on its way, rims out. And the rebound taken by Napa Valley. They'll look to push the lead up to four here with a long pass cut off by Donnell Stafford, and he's on the breakaway here. He's got numbers, and he will have a chance at a three-point play Picking up right where he left off last game. Yeah, great awareness on the defensive end and then nice finish on the offensive end and now he'll go to the line for the M1 free throw. That was a great job there from Stafford. Yeah, we can see Napa Valley already coming out pretty reckless already just trying to get those fast break points and it's not really working out with them, working out for them so far. 
as we await Stafford to receive the ball. He does. This is a better rebounding team, Napa Valley, than so long this season. Napa Valley is currently averaging 44 rebounds per game compared to Solano's 34. So they definitely have some size down low in the paint. And that's something Solano needs to control throughout this entire game. Napa Valley here looking to respond, being down one here, 3-2 with 18-18 18, 18 here in the first half. And poked away by Stafford. It's going to be Napa Valley ball. Yeah, if Napa Valley wants to stay in this game early, they have to reduce their turnovers already. They've been pretty careless with the ball so far. They are met by very good pressure for Solano early on as you see Jordan Adams right there picking up. Javon Williams. And Javon loses control of it. Has to kick it out. Napa's going to fire here. Hits back iron. That's going to be the call here. And a loose ball foul. I believe it's going to go against Salim Ali Musa. As we will now see Dry Benning bring it up here for the Falcons. Bain with a nice handoff to Roseboro. Now another handoff to Stafford. A little bump. No foul call. And a late whistle is finally called. And I believe it was continuation. So Danielle Stafford will head to the line for two. Yeah, that was a bit of a late whistle. But we're, we're seeing Stafford playing very aggressive as he usually is. And getting to the free throw line is definitely just three points practically because he's a very efficient three-point shooter shooting 73 percent and him being aggressive on that on his drive it helps the rest of his teammates gather their breath collect themselves so they can be continue to be aggressive on the defensive end second free throw on its way and it's good so 4-2 star for Solano as Napa Valley Currently trying to get their offense going in any way possible. And almost a travel there on the baseline. No call. Napa passing it around here with some good Solano defense. Pass inside. And who wants it? And it's stolen. Uriah Benning comes up with it. And here we go. Adams. He'll fire a three. No. Salim Ali Musa corrals the rebound. Napa pushing here. Bounce pass. Three on its way. Good. Braxton Adderley. With the three, first three of the night for Napa Valley, and it is five to four. Yeah, he's averaging just 15 percent, or he's shooting 15 percent from the three-point line. That's good shot there, though. A good ball movement here. Danelle Stafford gets into the lane. No good. Another rebound for Ali Musa. Napa pushing here. Good pump fake. Layup inside, and great defense by Jordan Adams as Brand Radu unable to connect on the layup. Now we're seeing some good ball movement here from Solano. Roseboro inside, layup, no. Here come the Storm. Drive, baseline, layup, no. Fight for the rebound, taken by Solano. Here comes Benning. Benning, nice move to the rim and score. Uriah Benning on the board for the first time tonight with two. And a great move there by Benning. Pretty finish. Here's a pull up three on its way, no. And that is taken that time by Solano. Chance at an open lane, it's rejected. Now here we go, it's a one on two here for Napa Valley. Euro step move, good. Braxton Adderley had two defenders on his left and right and was still able to finish in contact, and Solano calls for time. Yeah, we're seeing some pretty finishes from both teams, and I think they're both just running very up-tempo, quick uh, offense here. And, um, you know, you got to credit Napa for they're, they're definitely getting the, the right shots they want, and they probably could be up more if they just hit those shots. But you got to credit them for staying in this so far. And, See how Solano responds. Yeah, with both teams running a fast-paced tempo, they take a big risk with the turnovers and the inefficient shots they take. But so far, with, on their fast break, they've been able to finish, like you said, pretty at the rim. Now Solano gets ready to inbound here.
Falcons currently down one with 15.45 left to go here in the first half. Adams curls off the defender, no good. Stafford gets the rebound into his hands, put back, good. Danelle Stafford gets another basket. It's now eight to seven, Solano's back on top by one. Yeah, Stafford gets very physical down low. And a rejection and a foul called on Danelle Stafford. Yeah, Danelle's a very underrated rebounder. He's he leads, he's top five in the conference in rebounds, and you don't really expect that from his size at 6'3". First shot on its way, no good. Second shot for Javon Williams, no good. Javon shoots about 72% from the line. He misses both. Eight to seven, Solano up by one, looking to add on to their lead here. Roseboro gonna try to drive baseline, kicks it out. Driving layup back to Roseboro. Roseboro, baseline, good. Barry Roseboro adds on to Solano's lead, it's now to three. Yeah, we got some of Solano's bench coming in here. Let's see if they can uh, provide some scoring off the bench. We didn't really see that a ton in their last game. As a matter of fact, I don't think their bench even scored in the win over Mendocino. Well, this is the perfect opportunity to use to use your bench to, against a, a weaker opponent in the conference to give them some confidence. And I think that's so huge is this having that depth. It's, you know, not just about having a solid starting lineup. If you have a good bench depth, that really can help you out a lot. Well, like you said before the game's on, it's like they're going to lose a lot of their players going into the next season. So utilizing your bench right now is going to help in the long run. As Salim Ali Musa was able to get that to go, we're all knotted up at 10. Some good ball movement here. Here's a drive, kick out to the corner. Three on its way, no. Cole Arabian unable to make his first three of the night. Arabian's a good three-point shooter, that's what you want from him. Rebound taken by Ali Musa. Musa fighting for it with Stafford, and Stafford wins that battle. So here we go, Stafford moving all the way up to the rims. No good, looks like that was partially deflected. And Napa Valley will go the other way. That's what you want to see from him, though. You want him to go after those, not only the loose balls, but you want him to take it from the big man so they don't even have a confidence down, down there. An attempt at a spin move. Could have been a travel as well. Ref didn't call it. As Anthony Jones handling the ball here for Solano. He'll set up his offense as Solano gets to Stafford. Stafford. Has two defenders around him. Roseboro corner three on its way. Good. Barry Roseboro knocking down the triple. And that forces Napa Valley to call a timeout. Yes, Nate. The Solano's ball movement is helping them find those open shots around the perimeter. They wasn't really falling in the beginning, but now we see that they're getting they're getting the rhythm. They're getting the rhythm. Sorry. Hey, getting the rhythm back indeed. And it looks like we might have a close game if Solano will continue to allow Napa Valley to stick within range of playing some good defense and also not getting their offense flowing as well. Yeah, Napa Valley's, they know how, to, they're learning how to stay in it. They're not letting Solano get too far ahead. They're learning to keep their composure. Yeah, I'm sure they're hungry. They, they definitely are not satisfied with how they've played the last few games and just in 2020 in general. They definitely want to step it up a notch here against Solano and pick up a conference win. Yeah, they're looking for any sort of life, as you mentioned, Zion. As this is a team that is really struggling to get some wins going together as they're taking on Solano. And again, we mentioned how good of a rebounding team Solano is. And they got some players, they got some hype down there that Solano can't really take care of, then they can easily get some second chance points and get back into this game. Yeah, rebounding is all about want also. It's like all about effort. And we see that from Danelle. We see that from 
all the role players as well as the want to go get that rebound. So, Napa Valley will have it here. Let's see what they do coming out of the timeout. Low scoring so far. See if that turns around. We've definitely seen Solano play against some fast-paced teams, but Napa Valley is definitely taking their time. And corner three, Cato, from when it left his hands, wasn't going to go in. Five for the rebound and a put back that time for Shakir Howard. He's on the board for the first time tonight, and we have a whistle here. Yeah, I was wondering uh, before the game he, why he wasn't starting. He does average 16 points per game. Maybe he's like a Lou Williams, maybe just better coming off the bench, or just uh, who knows. But yeah, a lot of coaches will feed off of that. As you mentioned, a good example, Lou Williams, or even a Montrezl Harrell. Yeah. Anthony Jones sizing up his defender. Pass out to the corner. Now down low to Holland, and he scores. So Ricky Hollinton, his first basket of the night. Napa Valley on the other end, misses, and a rebound taken. Here comes Solano. There's some of that bench spark that we need to see from the Falcons. Jones has it here, and now he kicks the Benning. Solano kicking it around. Economo. Will drive. There was a push. No call. Wow. That was price. Now here's Uriah Benning trying to find somebody. Jones firing, or excuse me, sorry, Holland for three. No good. And now Valley will go the other way here. Fast break opportunity, and they execute perfectly. Yeah. Zach Swim, his first points of the night. Yeah, we've been seeing those passes from Napa Valley throughout this whole first half. It seems like that was the main focus to get Solano running. Here's Economo now going against a taller Salim Ali Musa. And I believe they called a foul on the floor against Ali Musa. Yeah, they're just trying to advance it. Napa's trying to advance the ball quickly and get as many possessions as possible. Well, like you said earlier, Zion, Solano's bench didn't score a lot last game. So if you're Napa Valley, you want to get those players in the game, knowing that the Solano relies a lot on their starters. Getting a lot of whistles so we far. <laughs> I'm trying to identify them as well. Might have been a foul away from the ball, I'm assuming. As again, with all these whistles, there's a reason why there's 11.54 left on the first, uh, first half of play. So it's a very slow game here from Solano College as Nate McKay, Zion Trammell, and Trey Hunt on the call for tonight's game. And here's a three on its way. No. Long distance that time. Napa gets the rebound. Napa kicking it around. Trying to find somebody. They do. Here's a three. No. Good rebound by Economo. Met by pressure right when he gets it. Cole Arabian now. Kicks it out. Baseline drive. Surprised there was no foul call as there was a lot of contact. But Solano will regain possession. Yeah, we, we see a lot of blatant stuff that we think should be called, like that push in the back earlier. And that one right there also looked like a shooting foul. Holland was wide open. He didn't take it, but now will go driving. No, good. And now here comes Javon Williams. Yeah, I was thinking Holland would take that shot. And and one opportunity on its way for Javon Williams. He was met by a lot of contact and hangs to the line for a three-point play opportunity. Even though Napa is pushing the ball for pushing the ball up the court, Solano was able to get back pretty fast. They just he, uh, he just went through a lot of contact right there. Javon shoots 72% from the line this season, and he knocks down that one. It's now 17 to 15. And this slow paced game, both teams trading buckets. 
Haven't seen really a big lead yet as there's Economo knocking down the bucket. It's now 17 to 17. Yeah, for Solano, you don't want to play too, you don't want to play down to your opponent. Um, you know, the record is significantly better than the Napa Valley. You definitely want to play to your own level and hopefully we'll see that. As Cole Arabian strips it. Arabian on the fast break. He puts it up and puts it in. Cole Arabian with a chance at a three-point play. Great finish by Arabian. He's known for his three-point shooting, but there's his, a great finish right there. Yes, and we're already seeing a completely different game from the Falcons bench, just being able to put more out there for the starters so they can take a deep breath. So Arabian at the line, knocks it down. And that will allow for Anthony Hatfield to check into the game for the first time tonight for the Falcons. Chance, Farrell Martin handling now gives it over to Javon Williams. Now we see Shakir Howard give a nice pass over to Radu. Napa is trying to pass it here against this great Salon defense on this possession, and the shot is no good. Adams hustling for the ball, he gets it. Good defense here we're seeing from Napa Valley. And now Salon will take their time and call out their offense here with Danelle Stafford talking to his group. Almost oh, a double team. Adams gets blocked from behind, has to find someone, gives it to Economo, and he is able to get it up and in. I'm sure that's not how Solano wanted to draw up that play, but it falls and nice bucket. It'll take the, I was about to say easy. That wasn't an easy shot, but as, as I was saying that, a travel was called against Napa Valley, and Solano will get it right back. We're kind of seeing a bit of a momentum shift here. 7-0 run here from the Falcons. And they're looking good, and they have any chance at a basket. They need to take it and build on this lead quickly as, again, this is a very good Napa Valley team that you should not underestimate. Here's a drive. Easy layup that time from Uriah Benning. There was just no defense inside the low post for Napa Valley. And an offensive foul called against Braxton Adderley. We'll go the other way with Solano having the possession. Yeah, turnovers are killing Napa right now. They have to... They have to take a deep breath and slow down a little bit. They're too far, too far ahead of themselves right now. Yeah, and allowing Benning to have that wide open layup, that really should never happen. Have someone, no one in the paint to defend that. Trying to find something here, and Solano's unable to get it. Drive Benning with another opportunity, and he is fouled, and he is heading to the line. Seeing some good... Offense there from Benning. Showing his paint presence. And he shoots 81% from the field. Or excuse me, sorry, 81% from the free throw line this season. And that first shot is no good. That will definitely bring down the average. Yeah, we can see Napa started bringing some more size down low as they keep getting allowing the Falcons to score way too much in the paint. Chance to extend the lead and put it at eight with this free throw. And it's good. So let's see if Napa Valley can get their offense going. They have not had an answer so far for Solano on their run. And that is met at the rim that time from Danelle Stafford. What a block. Here comes Uriah Benning. And one too many steps that time for Benning. Yeah, Stafford not afraid of the height difference. Just goes up there and denies the shot. Yeah, he's not really afraid of anything, really. He'll go for the loose balls. He'll go for the blocks against someone who's a lot taller than he is, but he doesn't really care to do anything for his team. He is a very valuable player on both ends of the floor for Solano. Salim Ali Musa trying to find a cutter. Couldn't find nobody. Now here's a corner three. 
its way. Good. That's the second time we've seen Braxton Hourly miss that shot. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of and one opportunities for the Falcons, and they're converting on those layups. And Adams getting in on the fun. We can see a Napa Valley on the offensive end. They just, they're not really spaced out when they shoot the ball. There's someone always right next to them. It's like they don't, they don't really have the offense together right now. See Javon Williams get by Adams. What's going to be the call here? Offensive foul again. So Napa Valley's offense is looking non-existent so far. And that is the ninth team foul here in the first half for Napa Valley as well. Yeah, and those offensive fouls are just frustrating. You know, you're trying to make a play and you're they stop because of a whistle and the offensive foul. That's just super frustrating. But credit to Solano. Some referees tend to not call those, but tonight the refs are definitely paying a close attention to those offensive fouls. As Danelle Stafford will drive, misses. Ali Musa throws it away, and another turnover for the Storm. Yeah, they're not really thinking right now. Their head is not in the game. And you can just tell, looking over at Napa's bench, Coach Ball is furious with this team right now. Yeah, I think they just need to slow it down a little bit. And they're See if that maybe works. Right. Good ball movement. Adams faked the corner three. Now he has to find someone. He gives it over to Dale you know, Stafford. Playing on a give and go. Now Adams will fire the field goal, and it's good. It's now 30 to 17. And again, we're waiting for Napa Valley's offense to wake up. Yeah, we can just tell that the Falcons trust their teammates more than the than Napa does because just by the ball movement alone. Almost another turnover for Ali Musa. And a foul away from the ball, I believe, as that could have easily been another turnover for Napa Valley, but the refs are going to call a foul against Solano. As it's very, oh, go ahead, Trey. My bad. We can hear the Falcons communicate a lot more than the than Napa on the defensive end. They just so much more louder, just more communication. And their bench definitely is being much louder than Napa Valley. You look over there, there's, they just look confused and disappointed with the way things are going. Here's a drive layup. Can't fall, but Napa Valley is able to finally score. Brandon Radu gets the layup. And the ice cold streak's finally broken for Napa Valley. Danelle Stafford got the bucket. It's now 32 to 19. And just as they finally get a bucket, they can't stop them on defense. Can't be trading buckets at this point. For the drive this time. And the same shot, same result for Radu. Yeah, Radu is the only really real life they have right now. He's the one being more aggressive and more efficient down low. Benny hands it off to Roseboro. Three, no. The rebound taken by Zach Swim. Napa looking to cut into single digits here on this possession. Layup, good from Braxton Adderley. And we've now seen Napa go on a 6 0 run. And that gets Solano to call for time. Yeah, Napa's found their offensive identity in these, fast, in these last few possessions. We've seen some good offense from Radu and Adderley, and I think just they're slowly just trying to climb back in it. And Trey, let me go ahead and ask you, what do you think is happening to Solano's defense down the stretch in the 6 nothing run we're seeing from Napa? Well, right now their paint defense is starting to fall off. They, they started off really good, but right now they're letting too many second chance points down though after their, that, miss, that first missed shot. Yeah, you definitely have to see the pain presence show up a little bit more down the stretch as with 6.01 remaining here in the first half, Napa Valley can definitely go on a run in a hurry if they want to. 
Game's not over yet. You still got a lot of basketball play. As you're right, Benny will bring it up here for Solano. Benny finds Adams. Adams contested three. I don't, I don't think that hit the rim as Napa Valley will go the other way here trying to cut into this lead. Adley met by two defenders. Has to find someone. Hands it off to Macias. Pump fake and a foul is called. That's going to go against Uriah Benning. Yeah, there's some swarming defense from the Falcons. I still want, I still want to see more spacing from Napa Valley. A lot of them are too, too close together. It's making the offense get cluttered. Adderley inbounding it here for Napa Valley. Salim Ali Musa has been very quiet in this game and stripped and taken away that time from Anthony Jones. Jones, hot step. Here's a three on its way, hits front iron. And although they didn't get the result they wanted, that was a great move and great pass from Jones. It was definitely a great way to execute the hot step from Anthony Jones as we'll see how Solano responds on the offensive end. The layup is up and no good. Who wants it and it's gonna be a travel as Zach Swim came down hard and he's able to get up. Let's see if Solano can pull together another run before the halftime. Yeah, because they're not in a position to be comfortable with the lead right now. They definitely want to expand on it and not give Napa too much momentum. After last game, letting Mendocino come back in that game slowly, they should know today that they don't want to let the same thing happen against Napa. And I thought it would have been a turnover against Alano, but no foul call that time. Armani Economo able to get the bucket despite the contact. Yeah, great pump fake. Here's a nice drive to the rim by Braxton Adderley. I'm sure Economo wanted the whistle, but great idea to pump fake and get the easier shot on the, on the layup. Nice fake by Roseboro. Hand off to Danell Stafford, and he gets the basket. But what a pass from Barry Roseboro. And on the other end, Napa Valley is heading to the free throw line. That was so slick by Barry to, to dish it off to Danell down low. That's just chemistry right there. He knew your man was going to be there. Yeah, that's definitely just knowing where your teammate's going to be at the at that point in time. And it was a great and sweet move by Roseboro to get to the, the rack. For a free throw, good. Now 36 to 26 with 411 left here in the first half of play. Surprised Alano hasn't. Try to draw as many fouls from Napa Valley there. One away from being in the one and one. Can definitely help them out heading to halftime to gain the lead. As it's now 36 to 27. Well, it seems like the ref are also missing a lot of calls. If they called as many as we think they should, then they'd probably be in the bonus by now. They were calling a lot in the beginning, but they sort of died away from that. As there's a three in the corner. Air ball doesn't even hit the rim. And here's Stafford. He'll look to pull up and hit. Danelle Stafford able to get the basket for Solano, and it is now 38 to 27. 20 second timeout for Napa Valley. Yeah, you could tell Stafford is just feeling it after after that shot, the way he ran off the court. But I think for Anthony Jones on that three, I think the pump fake or that you know split second of waiting and then shooting kind of affected his shot a little bit there, but. Nonetheless, it's an 11 point lead for the Falcons. See what happens in these final three minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah, Napa Valley, their perimeter defense is not really getting out there fast enough. They're still to find a lot of open shots. They're not knocking a lot of them down, but they have a lot of open shots that they're eventually, they eventually will knock down. With 3.50 to go, Solano with an 11 point lead and again, we'll see if Napa Valley can go on the run as great way, 
Great job of cutting off the passing lane from Armand Economo. <laughs> yeah, Economo just swatted that thing out of there. I mean, he read the lane. Yeah, I'm sure they're pretty tired of seeing that pass keep getting through. See Adderley handle the ball now. Back to Adderley. The quick drop off over to Martin. Napa trying to find something here. Adderley fakes. Adderley step back, jumper, no. And the rebound taken by Roseboro. That was some good defense by Anthony Jones to stay up in his face right there. Jones did a good job of denying the ball. And he's on the move here as he gets it. Stafford fakes the screen. Now up top to Economo. Now to Adams. Corner three on its way. No good. Jordan Adams struggling from the field tonight. And a strip from Donnell Stafford. Who wants it? And Economo gets it. Great defense by the Falcons. As Stafford will take his time here. Looking to size up his defender. Stafford gets into the lane and scores with ease. He just makes it look so easy. I mean, it, it's, it's pretty, pretty exciting to watch. And Craxton Adderley crossing over multiple defenders but just misses the layup. As now Stafford is back up top. Pass over to Jones. Jones looks at the size of his defender with a spin move, layup, no good. And a rebound taken by Zach Swim. And a strip and takeaway from Armand Economo. He is all over the place tonight defensively. Here's a Euro step from him. Bucket, no good. Napa's pushing again here. Yeah, he's definitely using his length to get in the passing lanes. And a trip. Going to go against Armand Economo. Those, those outlet passes are going to come and bite Napa in the butt later on down the, down the, way, down the road because you risk a turnover every single time. No continuation here. They're going to say it was not in the shooting form. So Napa Valley will inbound it on the side. Oh, my big, oh, go ahead. Big change of substitutions here for Solano. I saw one ref signal that they were going to take it out on the side, but now they took it underneath the basket as Napa Valley was able to get into the lane and score that time. It's now 40 to 29. Solano with the 11 point lead with 145 left to go here in the first half of play. Yeah, well less than two minutes left. If you're Napa, you have to bring him back down to single digits before the, before the end of the first half. Nice drive to the rim. A foul going against Napa Valley. And Solano will be in the one-and-one one here, so I believe Uriah Benning will hit to the line. As Solano will wait for their substitution. So one-and-one one situation for Solano for the last almost a minute and a half here in the first half. As that will allow for Solano get their substitution in. Ryan Benning, second free throw, good. 13 points, Solano lead here in the first half. Yeah, we see the Falcons making adjustments, not letting Napa get back in this game so fast. That's a fading jumper that time from Brandon. It's now 42 to 31. Ryan Benning. And an offensive foul. The refs are calling that tonight as that goes against Uriah Benning. And now Valley will have another possession here. And we have, believe that is Uriah Benning holding on to his right leg. Or excuse me, sorry, his right knee. Hopefully he's okay, but he does look to be in a lot of pain. He is able to walk in his own two feet, so that is good. So I'm sure he'll get it checked out. Napa getting their offense inside Adderley. 
able to draw the foul and will hit to the line for two. Yeah, that's a good job by Braxton to keep continue to be aggressive down low, especially as a guard. It gives you a lot of team confidence that if you can get score down there, then the rest of your team can. Adderley shoots about 87% from the free throw line and he misses the first. So I guess if you're an 80% free throw shooter, you're going to miss one tonight. Mm -hmm. Second free throw on its way and it's good. So the lead is trimmed down to 10. Napa's still down by double digits. As Solana will look for another bucket here on this next possession as we're seeing some great ball movement here. Rosebeer getting around his defender. A good handoff here. Shot is up and good for Cole Arabian. It's now 44 to 32. He's had some productive minutes so far. Great Arabian shot there. looking good on defense as well. Napa looking to buy a bucket before that first half ends. And another offensive foul going against Napa Valley. Yeah, the aggression is not really working out for Napa Valley right now. They're, a lot of their, they're not really attacking them the right way as they should. And now for Solano, you got 18 seconds, plenty of time to get a, another bucket before the, end, the, before the half. 44 to 32 with 10 seconds left here in the first half of play. Step back, Jay on its way, no. Danelle Stafford gets the rebound with the handoff and a turnover for the Falcons. So Napa Valley will have a chance to heave one up from half court. Yeah, I don't think Lanier Haynes is expecting that pass from Stafford. Adderley gonna hoist one up, no good. So. After 20 minutes of play here in the first half, Solano leads by 12. It is 44 to 32. We'll be right back right after this here on the Solano College Sports Network. Hi, this is Danelle Stafford. Thanks for watching Solano College Sports Network. Welcome to another edition of On Campus here on the Solano College Sports Network. I'm your host, Nate McKay, and today I'm being joined by one of the newest members of your baseball team here at Solano, Braden Huckabee. Braden, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. So, Braden, what have the first impressions been so far of your new team? Great coaching, great program. It's great team players that are on my team. I love them all, they're, and I've only been here for a short time, and they're like my brothers, family. Uh, the catching group we have is incredible. It's one of the best programs I've been at. Nice, that's great to hear. So the last time you played, for those who don't know, uh, was in 2017-2018 year. You played over at Contra Costa. Um, tell us a little bit about how that season went for you. Um, wasn't the best of seasons. It, uh, we only won about four or five games in conference. So it wasn't the ideal start to a college I wanted. But I got the exposure out there. I got the playing time. I helped that team as best as possible with the short amount of playing time I had. And then you went ahead and transferred over to Los Vedanos College. You played there for the 2018-2019 year. Uh, you ended up redshirting. Uh, take us through about how that season went. Um, that season, uh, they have a great program over there. There's nothing to complain about. It's just I had a redshirt for my because I didn't believe my skill was there and that my grades and stuff were there which was an accident by my fault. But um, otherwise, they have a great program over there. Just, I, I had a fun time over there. So you're now bouncing around through two teams. You now find yourself here at Solano. Again, you mentioned about you sort of building a family connection with your teammates. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it's just because when I first got here, I was welcomed with warm comfort. Like, this is the first place I've been where I feel comfortable on the team, because when I went to the contra class and I lost them down us, I didn't feel like I fit there. But when I came here, I felt like I fit, and I, that's why I love it here, and I love the players. And so you play catcher um, through the past two seasons listed online. So what do you feel like you can bring to the catcher position for the Falcons? Um, we have, like I said, we have great catchers other than just me. 
So it doesn't matter to me who starts, who the backup, doesn't really matter to me as long as we can help each other succeed and bring the wins and the conference title to Solano, that's all that matters to me. And so let's talk about your new coach, uh, Scott Stover. How has he been so far impacting you as a player and also as a person as well? Um, he's been an interesting story, honestly. <laughs> um, he is definitely a charismatic guy, um, but he's honestly one of the most dedicated and, and amazing coaches I've had. He's really hard on us most times, but mm -hmm. it honestly has made me realize the problems I've been having as a person and a player, and it's become such a clear note to me that that's something I needed to change, and it's helped a lot. So through these few practices that you guys have had so far, what have you seen so far as you guys continue to pretty much get ready for the upcoming season? I think that we have a great team right now for the upcoming season. I think we'll definitely make a run for our money with conference titles. Um, but other than that, it's I just we have a great program. That's really all it is. And so what are sort of the goals that you guys have set for the season? Conference title, of course. That's our first one, but we're not stopping there. We want state champions. We want, like, we want it all. That's how it is. That's our goals. Nice. That's great to hear. So, a couple facts that about yourself. Again, you batted 318 in your last time you played on the field. Is that sort of what you want to see again? Is that sort of something that you want to elevate yourself as a player going into next season? I definitely want to see better. I want to see around 350. Um, with way more RBIs and way more hits and just honestly as much as I can do to help this team win. And a final question before we go. Again, you talk about wanting to bat 350. What's it going to take for you to get there? Um, honestly, I've been tweaking with my swing a lot and it's really helped a lot where I'm becoming and getting a lot more barrels of the ball. So I think just the simple change of that and seeing the pitcher, the ball out of the hand is going to help a lot because I haven't been really tracking it. All right, Brayden, I really appreciate you stopping by the studio. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so that's going to do it for this edition of On Campus here on the Solano College Sports Network. For my guest, Brayden Huckabee, I am Nate McKay. Thanks for tuning in, and we hope to see you next time. Hey, it's Ricky Amitala. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education. We have everything that an automotive shop would have or even a dealership would have. If you guys are interested in automotive at all, go to Solana Community College. Check out the automotive program. It can be a career path for you, just like what I'm doing, or it could be an extreme hobby as an enthusiast. If you really like cars and learning stuff all the time, then this is the best place to go. Hey everybody, it's Anthony Jones. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Welcome to another episode of On Campus here at Solano College Sports Network. I'm your host, Trey Hunt, and here with me is our special guest, guard for your Solano Falcons basketball team, Anthony Jones. Anthony, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And just to get things started, um, what brought you here to Solano? Well, originally I was going to go to school out of state, but I decided to stay home and just stay local, go somewhere uh, more convenient for me. Mm -hmm. And um, when did you even start playing basketball? Like, what, around what age? Um, in third, third grade, so probably around like age eight or nine. And what motivated you to pick up that basketball and like what made you love the game? Uh, everybody in my family played, like my aunties, and my grandma, my dad, and his brother. And it just kind of felt good, so I just stayed with the lineage and kept playing. And do you have any family members that help you while you're on the court and support you? Do they all, do they all come to the games also? Um, my mom and my auntie come sometimes, but for the most part, that's usually it. Mm. And 
when when it comes to being a student athlete, it can be found to be difficult, like balancing the two with school life and playing basketball. So how do you find time to balance your schoolwork and balancing being on the court? Uh, well, I just try to knock out my homework early during the week so I don't have to really worry about it uh, during the rest of the week so I can just go to class and practice and just come home and relax. And with being a guard, basketball takes a lot of skill and it takes a lot of preparation. So how do you see your, your skills being able to help your team succeed this season? Well, I feel like I have a pretty good handle on the ball. So usually it's like one-on-one -on -one or even two-on-one. -on -one. I can usually break down the defense and uh, find the open player. And since you, like you said, you had a good handle on the ball. So like, what do you do in the off season to make sure that your skills stay good and stay, uh, be able to help your team? Uh, just stay in the lab, honestly. You just gotta try to hoop every day. Even if you can't like go to a gym, maybe go outside, just practice having the ball in your hands. And do you do that, do you do that by yourself or do you do that with teammates, friends? Uh, sometimes I go with teammates and friends. Sometimes I just go by myself just to uh, do what I wanna do, get some rust off. And do you have a teammate that like you, you two just have a great connection on the court? Uh, my teammate, his name is Uriah. Uh, we played in high school together. Mm -hmm. And he used to play at CC, but I uh, I was talking to him over the summer and told him, like, I feel like we'll have a good team this year, and mm -hmm. I feel like uh, we could do something special, so you should, like, come over here. And now he's here, and I feel like we have a pretty good connection because we've known each other for so long. That's good. So you have a good connection on the court, and then do you guys have a good connection off the court, too? Yeah, we hang out all the time. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's good with your teammates, but with your coach, Nagel, how is it like playing for him? Um, It's good playing for Nagel. Uh, sometimes I feel like they make, like, the substitutions are weird sometimes, but mm -hmm. I think they're good coaches, and they're like doing they they do what they think is right. So I'm gonna just stick with what they do. I think they're gonna do the best for us. And do you see yourself? Do you think you could be a basketball coach one day? Um, I don't know if I'd want to be a coach per se, but maybe a trainer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, with your with your major in sports medicine, where do you see yourself being able to do with that major? Um, in case basketball doesn't work out and I can't go to like the highest level and keep playing, I want to be like a trainer so I can stay around the game. Mm. And do you want to be in the NBA level? Do you want to train in the college level? Um, honestly, any level that would give me the best opportunity, I would go do. Mm. And do you have a favorite basketball team? Uh, the Houston Rockets. The Houston Rockets. Are you from Houston? No. I used, um, I liked James Harden when he was on the Thunder, mm -hmm. and then when they traded him to the Rockets, I kind of just went with him. So. so what do you think about that whole Westbrook and Harden combination? I feel like it's going to be pretty good for us. You think it'll work? Yeah, I think it will work. They so have pretty your... good chemistry from playing in OKC. Mm -hmm. So what's your expectations for them this season? A championship. A championship? A championship. So who do you see as their biggest threat? In the West, probably the Clippers. The Clippers? They look like they have a pretty deep team. Mm -hmm. So do you think that you guys could beat them in seven, six? I think we could beat them in seven. In seven? Yeah. And so who, which team do you despise the most? The Warriors. The Warriors? Yeah. Why? Because it seems like everybody around this area is just a Warriors fan, mm -hmm. and they're always just talking about, oh, the Warriors this, Warriors that, and it's just kind of annoying, so I don't really like them that much. So with being a guard, and like, where do you, what, what NBA team do you think you could fit the most? Um, I don't know, honestly. Probably, I feel like I could fit with any system like that needs a good guard. Mm -hmm. And do you see yourself helping more offensively, or do you see yourself more as a defensive player? I feel like I could help on both ends. I play pretty, I play good on defense, and I feel like I make good plays on offense, so I could help on both sides of the ball. Well, thank you, Anthony, and I wish you the best this season, to you and your team this season, and we hope to see you guys win that championship. Me too. That's it for us here at Salon College Sports <laughs> Network for another episode of On Campus. I'm your host, Trey Hunt, and thank you again for joining us, Anthony, and we'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Dr. Celia Esposito Noy. Thanks for watching the Solano College Sports Network. Hi, my name is Eric Visser. I'm in my fifth year as the athletic director of Solano College. To experience community college and its mission has been an outstanding experience. Solano College has a very rich tradition in intercollegiate athletics dating back to 1947. I'm very proud to uh, communicate that that rich tradition is still being continued with fine young men and women that represent Solano College on and off the court. In the fall we have the volleyball program, we have a very successful women's soccer program, we have both men's and women's basketball, and then we transition to four programs, baseball, Welcome. 
Hey, it's Jordan Adams. Thanks for watching the Song Call of Sports Network. If you are interested in a career in sports broadcasting, whether you're commentating a live game, or hosting your own TV show, or working behind the scenes, then this is the class for you. For more information, contact Greg Poff, that's me, at Solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester, and remember, it's more than just sports, it's an education. If you have an interest in a career in sports broadcasting, whether it's behind the scenes or on camera, then this is the class for you. Class is held every Wednesday from 1.30 to 4.30 in room 121 alongside the library building. For more information, contact Greg Paw. That's me at Solano.edu. We hope to see you here next semester. And remember, it's more than just sports. It's an education. And welcome back to Solano College. We're getting ready for the second half to get underway. 44 to 32 is the score. Solano up by 12. And Trey, we'll turn over to you for looking at Napa Valley. What are some of the things we're looking to see for them in the second half? We should definitely see reduced turnovers. They should de they should have definitely went into the locker room talk about okay we need to reduce how many times we're going to throw the ball up court and just risk the amount of turnovers that we're doing right now. And Zion will get over to you at the next get possession. Or actually, we'll go over to you now, Zion. What should we expect to see from Solano? Well, I mean, I think they're going to probably continue their aggressive approach, just kind of different from what we saw in their last game, where they were lighting it up from three, getting more points in the paint. Is what I expect to see from them. And really coming into this game, Solano is obviously the better shooting team compared to Napa Valley. It's just really rebounding is where the storm stand out the most. But we really haven't seen Solano be affected by that much in this game. This is a fast break chance for Solano and they are able to execute that perfect, perfectly, 46 to 32. That's just chemistry right there. You just knew that your team was going to be running with you all the way down. Can we look for Napa Valley to see how they respond? Fading jumper is good from Brandon Radu. It's the second time we've seen that tonight from him. Some good ball movement here. Shot is up on its way, and it is good. Uriah Benning with the triple. It's now 49 to 34. Yeah, that was a great shot. A great way to come out of the locker room, just applying pressure auto automatically. And a foul away from the ball against Nell Stafford. 49 to 34.
Juana looking for someone here. Or excuse me, sorry, Napa. Trying to get their offense flowing. As we now see Williams handling corner three on its way. Good. Javon Williams with his first three of the night. And Napa Valley, they're looking to expand upon the perimeter moving forward as they can definitely get a lot more threes going and get back into this game. Yeah, it was a sweet shot. Definitely maybe get build up some confidence for him. Met right at the bucket. No foul called. Will go the other way with Williams. Williams looking to go two for two here in the half. No good. Ali Musa gets the rebound out to Adderley corner three. Good. Back-to-back -back corner triples for the Napa Valley Storm. It's now 49 to 40. Yeah, that's all they needed for confidence is to knock down shots, and now they feel like they can compete. They're back in the game. And stripped away. Now Napa Valley, they're starting to develop a little bit of a run here. Good fake by Adderley, and he gets the bucket with ease. I'm surprised Coach Albert's not calling for time, as right now Solano is looking lost on the defensive end. Yeah, that was not really much of a contest down low. And also worth noting, Uriah Benning seems to be okay after getting shaken up in the first half. That right knee that he ended up coming off and slow to get to the bench as well. The shot is up, no good. Who wants it here? And Williams was looking over at the referee, signaling for Napa ball. It's going to be Solano basketball. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good heads up play by Ricky, not going after that loose ball, seeing that Napa Valley was the last player to touch it. Solano was getting off to a good start, but now all of a sudden Napa Valley's offense gets rolling, and now it's a 49-42 ball game. Here's Anthony Jones now handing the ball for Solano. Bounce pass over to Economo. Economo looking to size up his defender. Spin move, no good. Ali Musla looking to track down the rebound. He does. And now Adderley will bring it up here for Napa. Williams using to use the crossover here. Adderley up top. Good ball movement we're seeing here from the Storm. And the bucket inside it is good. Zach Swim. It's now 49 to 44. Yeah, Napa's already looking more efficient this half than how they started the first half, and it's working out for them. And look at this. Cutting off the passing lane is Williams. Layup and one opportunity on its way for Javon Williams. Napa's offense has woken up along with their defense. What a half so far for Javon Williams. Great finish there. What a great turnaround for the Napa Valley right now. Just a lot of momentum going towards their way right now. Williams able to get the three-point play. It's now 49 to 47 with 15, 15, 52 left here to go in the first half of play. Ikamo pump fake and able to get on the board. 51 to 47 now here in the second half. Yeah, Solano has to reduce their turnovers because the way the Napa Valley is knocking down their shots right now, and but also Solano coming down and committing turnovers is just not going good for them right now. Yeah, definitely can't. Definitely a little slow start here for the Falcons. See if they can turn it around. I think they just. They, they came out and they weren't really playing up to what they were doing at the end of the first half and seeing Napa Valley just come out with some different kind of energy. Yeah, Napa Valley is shooting just way much better. They, they look like a completely different team that came out this half. So you could tell they – but like I said from the last games, like when you're, when you're losing at the half, it's way easier to make adjustments compared to when you're winning. So right now Napa Valley made more adjustments than Solano could have done being down at the half. But yeah, the Falcons are looking real sloppy at the beginning. That was a good finish by Economo, but right now their offense looks not, not as good as they were in the first half. Well, I'd like to remind everyone that baseball season and softball season is about to start. 
chance to check out both your Falcons and Lady Falcons. Both squads coming up for the upcoming season. You can find that here on our YouTube channel, Greg Poff. That's G-R-E-G-P-O-F-F. -F. We have a bunch of interviews with former and current players for both softball and baseball team. And our next broadcast will be our first baseball game on January 28th. That's Tuesday at here at the college against Diablo Valley College. And I'll be at the Solano College baseball field starting at 2 o'clock. As a drive inside, Salim Ali Musa is going to probably hit to the line here for two. Yeah, that was a good take by Salim to get that contact, and then now you're able to knock down two shots to take down the, this deficit. Ali Musa knocks down the first. Seen a few comments on our YouTube page watching the live stream. A lot of people are enjoying it. Shout out to my coworkers who are probably watching the game after <laughs> losing, watching another losing Kings game. So <laughs> I'm sure they are either very furious or in a good mood. Hopefully it's the second one. Who did King, who they who the Kings lose to? They lost to the Detroit Pistons. Mm. As this time, we're able to see Ricky Holland knock down the triple. As I'm going to try not to have that King's loss on my mind throughout <laughs> the rest of the night. It's 54-48. My attention is on this game. And both coaches screaming at both their squads right now. Here's a drive inside to the baseline. Napa with a kick out. Trying to find someone. And who wants it? Williams is fighting down there with the Economo. And that's going to be off Armand. It's going to be Storm Ball. We're seeing a lot of talking on the floor on both Maybe. sides. It's yeah, there's each other. a lot of yelling from, <laughs> yeah, from, even from Solano's. And you would almost say this is the more aggressive Storm team compared to in the first half. Whatever Coach Ball said in the locker room is definitely working. Yeah. Here's a three on its way from Adderley. No good. Rebound Jordan Adams, and he's one of the players for Solano that hasn't got his offense going. He's been quiet in this game. Trying to find someone here. Three on its way. Good. Uriah Benning with the corner three. That gets the crowd on its feet. It's now 57-48. to 48. And a foul against Anthony Jones. Yeah, that's exactly what the Falcons needed. It was a three ball, and, and credit Anthony Jones for the assist. One thing I've kind of noticed with him is he's very good at getting, at driving and finding the open man. You know, he doesn't, sometimes when he gets to the lane, he'll, he'll make a nice move, and he knows where his teammates are. And you see that driving kick from Jones to Benning for the three. Now here's the problem. Solano has five team fouls. And we're at the 14-minute mark, so five more will put Napa Valley in a one-and-one. And, one. and the use of the chicken wing that time on Adderley, it's going to cost them an offensive foul. And I was just about to say the Storm don't have any, and there's, there's number one. And let's see if Solano can get some good offensive, offensive possessions moving forward, 57-48. to 14-04 here. Adams, three on its way, and it's good. He has been quiet all night, but he knocks down the three. It's now a 12-point lead for the Falcons. And on the other end, Napa's able to score with Chance Farrell Martin. That's all Adams may need to get to get going. We all know he's a great shooter. He may just need a couple shots to fall, and then he can start heating up. You're right, Benny now going against his defender. And out of bounds. Gonna be Napa Valley ball. Trey, do you think we'll see some good defensive possessions moving forward from the Falcons? Right now, they're they're starting to pick up their defense. They they were letting the the Napa Valley come into this game, coming into this half actually, and just knock down way more shots. But now they're starting to pick it up. Has met it, half court. See Napa passing it around here. Use of the baseline. Adderley thought about taking the three. Now kicks it out. 
Triple on its way, doesn't even hit the rim. Good save by Napa. They have another possession here. Layup, no good. And heading to the line will be Zach Swim. Yeah, that was a good job saving the ball by Shakir. Just able to give his team a second chance points and now they can take down this lead to single digits. Zach Swim at the line. Knocks down the first. Swim shoots about 46% from the free throw line. Had to double check if I read that right. And he knocks down both. Economo up top. Trying to find someone. Gives it to Arabian. Arabian fires for three and hits. Cole Arabian is having himself a night. It's now 63 to 42, 52. Yeah, and he's got a lot of life to this team right now. As we saw a nice spin move that time from Braxton Adderley. Adams with a handoff to Roseboro. Three on its way. Good. Barry Roseboro. With the contact, no foul, 66 to 54. Now we're seeing that Falcons offense start to come to life. Starting to come to life slowly but surely here. With it being 66 to 54 as we approach the 12 minute mark. Yeah, we know the Falcons are very dangerous from the three point line and once, you, once they get started, they don't know how to stop. And there's just a bad pass that time from Roseboro. Turnover for the Falcons. So now see Adderley handing the ball. And we do want to apologize for those watching on YouTube. Experiencing poor connection. Yeah, I saw some of those saw some of those comments. There was a few people commenting on there that there was poor connection, but but we hope for those who are tuning in to channel twenty six having some good connection on there. You know Stafford up top. Yeah, we know the Falcons are way more efficient when they get their offense going, the ball movement, movement, ball movement, and then find that open three. Now back to Stafford. Arabian, nice fake. He'll try to drive inside, create a, a pass for Ricky Holland. No good. And we have a whistle here going against the Falcons. We're seeing the, the fouls for the Falcons just being great, getting greater and greater distance from Napa. Just soon they're going to let, well, they're letting the Napa Valley get their free shots right now. So, Shakir Howard at the line. And knocks down the first. Not sure what the call was. It looked like they were in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but Solana only has eight fouls on the scoreboard, so I'm not sure if Napa will be in the one-on-one -on -one throughout the rest of the game, but nonetheless, Shakir Howard knocks down both. It's now 66 to 56. Yeah, Solano has to be smarter with their fouls. You don't want to let Napa come to this game just by free throws. Good drop-off pass, and it's stripped away and stolen by Napa. And I'm sure they would like to get their offense going as we have Approach the 11 minute mark. And inside drive that time is good. Javon Williams knocking down the layup. And the lead is now cut to single digits. Yeah, he was able to see the matchup that he had a lot of height advantage over Arabian, and he took advantage. Stafford looking to size up his defender. Met immediately by a Napa defender, but it gets it a fall regardless. Wow, that was a great finish by Stafford. Just not afraid of the contact. 
Cole Arabian now up top. Williams inside, no, gets his own rebound and puts it back up and in. Yeah, the Falcons don't really have a lot of height on the floor right now. And Lanier, I mean, Javon is really taking advantage of that right now. Napa trying to get back into this game. Economo corner, triple, no good, air ball. You can tell right away from up here that, are they gonna say it's gonna stay here? I'm surprised they're gonna have it stay here. I must have missed something. But Danell Stafford really jumped over the top of Javon Williams to get that rebound. Thought it was gonna be over the back. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely looked like he jumped over his back. I don't know really know what the refs saw. Yeah. Frustration on Napa Valley side. But they're able to get the turnover right here. Salim Ali Musa with the steal. Adderley against Uriah Benny. No good. And a rebound taken by Stafford. Solano pushing their offense here. With a handoff to Roseboro. Three on its way. No good. And now here comes Braxton Adderley for Napa. Ali Musa. He's been quiet in this game as well. But not until now. He knocks down the nice 10 footer. It's now 68 to 62. As we see Stafford with it. Stafford used the shoulder to create some space and it results in an offensive foul. Yeah, we need to see the Falcons start taking that time down. Right now they're rushing and committing turnovers and it's letting Napa come back into the game. And I really don't think we're going to see a blocking foul at all in this game. <laughs> yeah, I haven't. I, I, there's just been yeah a lot of offensive fouls, kind of tougher on the defense, or excuse me, offense. <laughs> and inside bucket that time for Shakir Howard. It's now a two-possession ball game. We've got another close one here from Solano College. And right now, Napa is being the more physical team. They're going down for the second chance points, the, the hard points in the paint. Adams. The defense. Sorry, Trey. No, you're good. Yeah. As I was about to say, Adams just met by two defenders there. Surprised he couldn't find anyone to find an open man, and that's going to be one too many steps for Amir Nak Excuse me, sorry, Amir Nakai. I believe this is the first time we're seeing him here in this game. Yeah, yeah I believe so. It'll probably be the last time because that clear travel was <laughs> bad. And he comes out of the game. <laughs> I was wondering, saying, why are you being so negative? Uh, and yeah. he comes out right the game. I was looking down at my papers, and then <laughs> I look up. Oh, he's on the bench. 68-62. Yeah. <laughs> uh, As Economo got slapped on the hand. And that will be the fourth team foul against Napa. Yeah, we've gotten some good games here from the men's team. Some close con close games so far. And Adams, corner three, no good. Rims out. Who wants it? And that is great basketball IQ from Shakir Howard to throw the ball off of Ricky Holland. We've seen Shakir save a lot of balls on both on the offensive end and now the defensive end is help gain, gain his team more possessions. Going to give him one right here as Napa is trying to gain an edge over the Falcons here in the final half of play. I believe that's Adderley down there. It is. And he's going to head to the line for two. Now this game is close. It could make this a two-point two game and for Napa, this has definitely been a good game for them. You know, still just seeing them, they've been in such a, they've struggled so much recently, and, and to see them come out tonight and put up a good fight against the Falcons, is well, definitely what you like to see. My apologies, but it's well, it's there for the taking on both sides mm -hmm. moving forward as we see them this free throw. And we see many Solano home games this season. He decided almost, I believe, by less than 10 points or less. And just like that, this ball game is tied with a three from Shakir Howard. 
as of right now, we're seeing Solano play down to the, their opponent's level. Rims out, and now Napa Valley has a chance to take the lead. And their bench is getting into it. And there it is. Salim Ali Musa gives Napa Valley their first lead of the second half. Yeah, we see Napa, they've just completely turned it around now. Now they're up and excited. Yeah, if you're Solano, you really need to get your offense going quickly as the edge is definitely on Napa's sides. As we see that bucket is good from Armani Economo. It's all knotted up at 70. Nice shot, sweet shot from Economo. Just composed and giving Solano a much needed bucket. Yeah, like you said, Zion, the men's games are always found to be a lot of, a lot of interesting and it's, it's coming down to the wire. Adley with a nice pass. Here's a drive inside, deflected and stolen. And a foul in the backcourt. I believe that was Ricky Holland who was able to get a hand on it to create the turnover. Substitutions here for Napa Valley as Chance Farrell Martin checks out of the game. And in, it, in all likelihood, we'll definitely see Napa exceed their points per game limit on the season as a team. They average 73 points. They're at 70 with six and a half to go. Radu is back in the game for Napa. Corner three, no. And that time, Zach Swim's able to get the rebound. Here's an outlet to secure Howard. Howard is looking like a different player in this half indeed. Yeah, he's, he's had a monster past few minutes. He's looked really good. Yeah, his energy off the bench has been helping Napa Valley just extremely. And he was open. And the drive, reverse layup, no good. Howard back up, misses. Wow, if that layup went in that first one, oh my, that was a crazy shot attempt. That was an acrobatic layup indeed. Yeah. He's trying to be on every highlight show in America. <laughs> Anthony Jones gets to the rack, misses. Here comes Braxton Ireley, wants to push his offense here. Will challenge Benning, gets to the rim and scores. And a much around. needed timeout for the Falcons. I mean, just look at the difference between Napa Valley and Solano's side. And uh, they just seem fired up and Solano's just kind of out of answers right now. Yeah, Solano in the first half, they were, we, like I was talking about in the first half, they were loud, they were in the game, they were talking, but right now they, they kind of got more quiet, and now they have to figure out a game plan to get back in this game. You know, you both mentioned the benches. It seems like the energy has swapped both mm -hmm. sides in this game. Definitely. As here in the second half, of course. Yeah. As we mentioned in the first half of play, Napa's bench was just non-existent at all, and now we're seeing them stand up, make a lot of noise, and they're looking good. Yeah. Seeing Solano just, we, we know that they're such a, for the most part, always just an energetic team full with, with energy and support from the bench. Yeah, but like who you talked about in the beginning of the game, Shakir Howard, is, he doesn't start, but he came, he's playing a crucial minutes right now and knocking down shots, playing good defense, putting all his, his whole body into this game right now. So 74 to 70, five and a half remaining here in the second half of play. As we now see arrive Ren Benning bringing up the ball for the Falcons. Bounce pass to Stafford. It's a tight game here from Solano College. Now Stafford looking to work against his defender. Kicks to Adams, three on its way, good. He is a player you need to step up and Jordan Adams delivers with that triple. Clutch shooting there from Adams. And a drive inside, no good. Great defense from the Falcons. And that timeout is looking like it's working. This here is Armani Conomo. Trying to find somebody he does. We're seeing a lot more minutes by Cole than Barry right now, so 
the hot hands right now as Arabian. Spin move, layup, no tip. Can't fall. And a rebound taken by Napa. They still hold the lead. They're up by one, 74 to 73. With four and a half remaining here in the second half of play. Three on its way, no good. And that is off of Napa, Solana ball. Let's see if Solano can find more open shots for Jordan Adams, who's heating up lately. Just keep the ball moving. Uri bending up top. Seeing Cole Arabian get some minutes here in crunch time. He's had a good game as here's the shot no good by Economo. Man, that almost looked like it was going to go in. Adderley up top. Now with the handoff. Every, every possession's huge. Howard trying to get his way inside, and looks like we got a turnover here. Falcons do get it. Now to Adams, met by pressure. Solana will slow down on this one. Pinnell Stafford up top. He can shoot the three, but he'll look to drive here, and got a foul against Zach Swim, and all the way from up here, you can tell he does not agree with the whistle. Oh, they called it against Braxton Adderley. I believe that's why the referee was telling Swim to relax. It's not against you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unless he was probably defending his team. Stafford, pull up Jay, no, and a rebound taken by Ali Musa. It was a good shot for Stafford, but he rushed it just a little bit. The big difference in this half is we didn't see Napa Valley come out, come into this half just chucking passes like they did in the first half. There's a lot of more reduced turnovers. As it looks like we're going to have a foul on the floor. The shot will not count, but it is one and one situation for Napa. So they will head to the line to see if they can make one. I definitely want to convert on these three throws. And Ali Musa is able to, and he shoots about 64% from the line this season. And with it being 75 to 73, we just talked about so many of these close games we've seen, and we got another one here tonight as Ali Musa is able to knock down both. Yeah, these last few minutes really become a free throw game. You know, really, who can convert on the free throws, whether, you know, the, especially with the team with, with the lead. Adams, three on its way, no good. And a rebound taken by a player who has stepped up big in this game, Javon Williams, as now we're going to see Napa on the other end go and missed the layup. But Uriah Benning lost the handle and ends up getting another possession to Napa Valley. Yeah, they got bailed. That wasn't really the best shot and yeah Napa got bailed there and the yeah we're seeing Zach Slim come I'd like to apologize for our stream going down should be back up now as a nice move to the rim that time by Braxton Adderley it's now 78 to 73 and man oh man this does not look like the same Falcon team we saw in the first half a lot of things have changed they're not knocking down as many shots as they are I'm as much as a shot as they used to, but they had to fix it. And you mentioned that, Trey. Shots are not falling as we see that one from Armand Economo unable to go in. I would imagine Napa will take as much time off the clock as possible. They're just being so much smarter with the ball this half and just taking their time. Even when they were down in the beginning, they were still taking their time to build their offense up. Stripped, stolen. Uriah Benning comes up with it. He'll step back, three on its way. Doesn't even hit the rim. Five for the rebound, who wants it? And a foul is called against Armand Economo. And yeah, it looked like a bit of a frustration foul from Economo. It was, and it's gonna result in a one and one for Napa. Or excuse me, sorry. Since they are now over 10, it's gonna be a double bonus. Yeah, you don't want that. You don't want 
those frustration fouls because it's just making the lead grow and grow and grow and just it's making it harder for yourself. So a timeout called. 1.56 left to go here in the second half of play. 78 to 73. Napa all of a sudden has woken up and just has changed this ball game. Yeah, I think if you're the Falcons, you just got to really um, figure out how to respond to adversity. You know, the, these situations happen, and it's, it's how you overcome, you know, that adversity and knowing your shots aren't falling, but figuring out ways to still uh, score because you're, you're down five. You, you got less than two minutes to go. There's still plenty of time to crawl back into this game, but for they really got to figure out, you know, what they need to fix and just keep that trust in each other that they can come back. Yeah, and Abbott Valley is taking a page out of Mendocino because they know Solano, when they get out to the lead, they don't really hold it as good as other teams are are, are doing. And right now they they took advantage of that, and they're trying to finish stronger than the Falcons are. Yeah, hey, you both made great points. And just moving forward, again, Trey, you mentioned just being more stronger, more physical down low in the paint is what we're seeing from Napa Valley. They are turning the ball over in this half. It's not really unbalanced in that category. But right now, we're just seeing the Falcons not get many good possessions on the offensive end. Yeah, on the offensive end, they just haven't been as efficient, especially just their starters just not really being able to knock down those open shots and finish down in the paint. Yeah, we've and we've just we've seen this a lot this year. You know, Solano they and as far as their home games, just they've gotten out to leads and it's they find a little bit challenging to to maintain those leads. And now sometimes it'll result in a win like Mendocino, but there's been other times where they've just haven't held on to the lead. And this is another one of those, those one of those situations. The Storm are on a five-game losing streak and are looking to break it here tonight. As Stafford just tries a, a very contested layup. Misses. Adderley, nice move to the rim, unable to get it. And a foul against Napa Valley. Trying to see, they called it against Salim Ali Musa. I think he was shoving away his defender down low in the paint. Yeah, this game's not over yet, though. We're yeah. talking about the Falcons blowing this lead, but they can still come back. Had a good look at three. Econo's not going to take it. Because met by a very good defense. With a quick handoff down low in the paint. Scramble here. Shot is up. No good. Just a chance to chip away from this deficit as much as possible. But Solano is unable to do so. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going down in that paint. We've seen a physical battle between Jordan. And then... We've seen Hatfield try to get a bucket down low, but it, yeah. Napa's defense has been too strong down there. Yeah, that was a good idea from Hatfield just, you know, with those pump fakes. And I think he's just trying to help out the team, trying to make a contribution. As Williams misses the free throw. And it's still a two-possession ball game. With Solano being able to knock down two threes. But obviously, you don't need it. You can easily get some quick buckets inside if you're able to convert your offense possessions to perfection as we see Williams knock down that free throw. Yeah, they just got to stay composed, trust each other. Now Stafford up top now. Barry Roseboro will fire a triple and hit. Barry Roseboro with a big shot right there. That keeps Solano in this game. Timeout, Napa Valley. That's exactly what Solano needed. They they definitely needed that three. Barry Roseboro, great three-point shooter, and he delivers there. And now this game just got a lot more interesting. Yeah, we were able to see, like you said, they kept their composure right there. So Napa Valley, you have to make them feel nervous. You have to create turnovers for, for the Falcons so they can start losing more confidence. Yeah, I, I definitely think for Napa, as far as offensively, they're probably not going to be rushing to get a shot off. They're definitely going to take their time and just not get too risky offensively. I do imagine we'll see some more pressure from the Falcons. But, of course, you got to make sure you do not allow a foul. 
at any point. So looking for the trap here against Williams. And almost a steal, but it's last off of Adams. Yeah, Nate, as you were mentioning, you just heard Coach, the Coach Aubert telling them, don't foul, don't foul, don't foul. So he really can't right now. Last thing he wanted to do is send them to the line for a double bonus. That's, that's what got them in trouble in the beginning of the half. They, got, they committed way too many fouls early, and now they know they have to be less aggressive. There's 10 seconds on the shot clock. Williams struggling here. It's met by very good defensive pressure. Adderley in the corner for three. No. Perfectly executed defense. Solano's got it. Now to Adams. He'll fire a three. No good. Adams had a good look at it, but just fell short. Yeah, that was just great defense by Solano, not fouling and swarming Napa Valley. And that's the shot you wanted right there, but Adams just couldn't get it to go. And Coach Aubert will now elect his team to foul for the rest of the way. So now you'll turn to miss free throws to help out your cause moving forward if you're the Falcons. We knew coming to this game that Napa was going to be hungry. You don't like, you don't like losing five games straight and knowing that you haven't won this year yet. Uh, we know the year just started, but five games in a row, this, you just, this is not good. So they wanted this one badly. And it was important that you don't, that you didn't underestimate them coming into this game. Again, Trey, you made a good point. Losing five straight, that creates a sense of urgency in a team wanting to get a win as we see them miss free throw there. But yeah, they definitely stepped up their game here in the second half. Good handoff here to Roseboro. Roseboro, it's clear Solano is trying to find a three. Adams, they have to get a shot off here. Roseboro fires, hits front iron. They're looking for any basket they can get. Corner three for Adams. No good. And a foul is called. Was his foot on the line? That's the question. I'm looking for the signal here from the referee. Yeah, is it going to be three or two? I believe I just saw the referee signal three. So it will be three free throws. Wow. Huge. Now Adams obviously has to convert. <coughs> and we mentioned how good of a free throw shooter he is this season. 87% from the line. Knocks down the first. So this is a situation where you need Napa Valley to miss at least one free throw on this next possession if Adams is able to make both. I imagine he will. And I'm sure they're going to use Holland or Hatfield to foul whoever gets the ball here for Napa Valley. And Adams knocks down all three. And now... A timeout is called as it's 81 to 79 with 13.5 seconds remaining on the game clock. Shot clock is turned off. It's always good that you know you can trust one of your best shooters on your team to knock down free throws. So at least give your team give your team a chance. So now you're just praying that Napa Valley does not make their free throws. Yeah, you gotta the situation if here is yeah, like you said, just hoping to miss one and um, giving yourself an opportunity because in the best case scenario obviously is if they miss both but and we'll see who Coach Ball for Napa puts out for his five but right now the worst free throw shooter on the team for the Storm this season is Zach Swim but he is two of two from the line in this game so he has not missed one yet obviously the second worst this season with the least averaging the free throw would be uh, Farrell Martin. Well, that's the difference between the two teams. We've seen Napa Valley exceed how many points they score per, per game this season, and we haven't seen Solano hit their mark yet. So good defense by Napa. I, I would imagine that Adderley will get the ball here to shoot. I mean, he's their best free throw shooter, 81%. I would imagine he gets the ball here. He did miss the free throw earlier, and now... Very close to a five-second call, but now a timeout is going to go for Napa Valley now. That's not really what you wanted, to burn a timeout in that situation. Storm. Now you have a, another breather here if you're Napa Valley to go over what do you want to do on this inbound. Yeah, the Falcons definitely have to try to, like you said, you don't even want them to give them a chance to shoot those free throws. So if you can commit a turnover right here, It'd be great, get the ball, 
and then knock down an easy shot, at least to tie the game. Yeah, and even if you get the t – if Solano does get the steal, I think and you still have plenty of time to just settle down for a sec and hurry up and, and get um, – a quick possession and a quick sh and get a shot off. It's not like you have to get the steal and just put it up instantly. You do have 13.5 to go. So, and I do think Solano does have a timeout, so you can try to go for the steal, but you definitely don't want to burn off a lot of time. You want to give yourself as much time as possible to also get your offense going if Napa Valley does miss the free throw on the foul. So let's see how this works out for the Falcons. 81-79. They get the inbound here, and that is... Oh, I had a good view from right here. Outerly, that was off him. Yeah, that definitely looked like it was off Outerly's hands. Oh, no, they called the foul. On a radio. Wow. He never even had full possession of the ball in the first place, and he called a foul. That is definitely something... That changes this game as I think we all agree that was going to be out of bounds in Falcons basketball. Yeah, I think that's just the ref assuming that there was just going to be a foul and not actually looking at the play and seeing that Adderley actually dropped it. I think he was just ready to blow the whistle in, in anticipation that there was just going to be an instant foul. But nonetheless, can't over. you can't change what just happened, so... There is no replay center in Secaucus, unfortunately. So, and Adderley knocks down both. So the Falcons need a bucket in a hurry here. They're gonna look for Stafford. Now to Adams, three on its way. No good, hits the front of the rim. They gotta find something here. Roseboro for three, no good. Adams put back, no good. And that will do it. So the Napa Valley Storm snapped their five game losing streak over the Solano Falcons. And Trey, we'll go over to you. What are some of the things that we saw from the Solano Falcons in this game? We saw them come out and not shooting as good they were in the first half. They weren't as efficient, and they didn't commit as many turn turn turnovers. But it was the shooting that really let them down this half. They, the buckets just were not falling for them. And now Zion going over to you, Napa Valley. They snapped their five-game losing streak. How were they able to do it? Well, uh, just a second half resurgence. You know, saw a great half from Javon Williams and Braxton Adderley and a good first half from Brandon Radu. So it's, it was just a complete momentum shift, and it's got to feel good for Napa Valley to break that losing streak and get a big-time conference win. Big-time conference win indeed. So that's going to do it for us here on the broadcast for our entire Solano College Sports Network crew and my broadcast partner is Trey Hunt. And Zion Trammell, I am Nate McKay. Thank you for tuning in to the Solano College Sports Network, and we hope to see you next time. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now, the funk soul brother. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now, the funk soul brother. Right about now, the funk soul brother. Check it out now.